Hello everybody and welcome to History Bite number 83, dated October 16th, 2020. I'm Walter, your mobile historian and blue collar scholar. This History Bite is entitled, Maryland's Circuit Courts. Maryland's Circuit Courts are the state's major trial courts of general jurisdiction. They have a long and deeply rooted history in the state and have been known by different names throughout time, such as county courts and superior courts. The state is divided into eight judicial circuits, respectively, and all 23 counties and Baltimore City have one circuit court, which is administered by an elected official known as the clerk of the court. The clerk of the court, together with the circuit administrative judge, who is appointed by the chief judge of the Court of Appeals of Maryland, administer the circuit court in their respective jurisdiction within their own respective spheres. Okay? As I mentioned earlier, as the state's major trial court of general jurisdiction, the circuit court generally hears a broader array of cases than its subordinate counterpart, the district courts. All right? The district courts are the state's minor trial courts of general jurisdiction, whereas the circuit courts are the state's major trial courts of general jurisdiction. So we'll go down the list of each jurisdiction type. With respect to civil jurisdiction, the circuit courts can hear monetary claims of $5,000 and higher. Now, the range of those claims from $5,000 to $30,000, the circuit court has concurrent jurisdiction with the district court to hear such civil claims. But claims that exceed $30,000 in value must be heard exclusively in the circuit courts. With respect to criminal jurisdiction, the circuit court hears major felonies, not minor. Okay, the circuit court hears major infractions of the law, things which can lead to multiple years in prison, life imprisonment, and of course previously capital cases before capital punishment was abolished uh, in the state. All right. Circuit court also has exclusive jurisdiction in hearing family law cases such as divorce, okay, custody, and child support, all right? The circuit courts also hear appeals from the district courts and from the orphans courts, as well as certain state administrative agencies, all right? Circuit courts are also empowered to hear domestic violence cases. Circuit courts are the only state court in Maryland which have jury trials, okay? So, as we mentioned in the history bite about the district courts, if one wishes to have a jury trial and is legally allowed to do so based on your uh, case from the district court, it would have to go to the circuit court where a jury trial could be granted. When a case is originated uh, in the circuit court, whether it be a civil or criminal case, a jury trial is an option, as this is the only court level where jury trials are possible, okay? In addition to everything I have mentioned, the circuit court is the judicial body which issues marriage licenses, okay? And by virtue of that, one may also have a wedding ceremony performed by a court official at the circuit court. Circuit courts are also empowered to issue notary commissions as well as perform the official oath for an individual becoming a notary public. Okay? So, circuit courts are therefore a very, very uh, broad ranging jurisdiction type of court hearing a litany of different type of types of cases okay with respect to judges of the circuit court okay judges on the circuit court may attain office 
in two distinct ways. They may be appointed by the governor of Maryland with the assistance of a judicial nominating commission. And unlike the district courts or our appellate courts, circuit court judges do not have to be confirmed by the Senate. If a circuit court judge is appointed by the governor, they will then stand, they will serve for at least a year in office. And once that year is completed, they will then stand for election, okay, at the next general election once that year in office has passed, okay? So that election might not be immediately after that year is complete. They have to stand for election in the next immediate uh, election once that year is complete. So it could be right after that, or it could be a year, a couple of years after that. It all depends on when the person receives office, okay? If they want to continue in office, they obviously must run, okay? Now, with respect to the circuit courts, these courts, along with the orphans courts, which I will get to in another history bite, circuit court judges can be challenged for their office by other Maryland attorneys. That's right. If a lawyer decides they want to run for a judgeship on the circuit court, all they need do is meet all the legal qualifications to be a Maryland judge, which we covered in another history bite. File that paperwork and they are officially a candidate for judicial office, okay? Once all those procedures are followed, primaries and whatnot, that person may then advance to literally challenge, okay, an individual for their judicial seat, okay? And in the general election, they just may win, okay? Does not happen very often. You can challenge a sitting judge or on the circuit court. It's a nasty process, um, in my humble opinion. I don't agree with contested judicial elections, but it certainly is possible, all right? Is the, like I said, this in the orphans courts, all right, are the only court levels in the state where a lawyer off the street can challenge a sitting judge for their office and potentially unseat them. Assuming that the sitting judge loses the election uh, to the challenger, then that challenger will go on and serve a 15-year term in office. And the process just repeats itself if they want to continue to hold office. If the judge uh, defeats the challenger, then they go on to serve a 15-year uh, term in office. And again, the process repeats, themselves, repeats itself if they want to continue in office. Okay, And these the judge can be re-elected over and over again until <clears throat> they reach the maximum judicial service age of 70, assuming they haven't retired before that. For the record, in the state of Maryland, if I have not already mentioned it, the maximum age that one can hold judicial office officially is 70. If you have not retired by that time, uh, you will be forced to retire under the state constitution. But you can always be recalled to per diem judicial service to sit on the court in which you previously served, as well as all courts below that one, all right? So you can technically not only get your judicial pension, but also receive per diem pay as well. So retirement from judicial office has a lot of perks in the state of Maryland, okay? So once a circuit court judge uh, continues in office, assuming they win the election, they preside over all the types of cases uh, during a 15-year term that I've mentioned, okay? The civil division, criminal division, uh, family division, and juvenile cases, all right? Handling juvenile matters as well, okay? All of these are matters handled exclusively by the circuit court, all right? Depending on the jurisdictional amount, the severity of the criminal infraction, and the circuit court has uh, complete jurisdiction over family and juvenile matters. Okay, so that about covers the general particulars of Maryland's circuit courts and its judicial officers. Okay, so if you have any questions, controversies, please leave them down below. If there's anything that I may have left out, 
do feel free to let me know, although I think I covered it pretty comprehensively. Thank you very much for listening to this History Bite. Take care, stay safe out there, and I'll talk to you at the next one. Peace.